Hello everyone. I hope everyone has had a very safe weekend. This has been quite a weekend and I realize that Irma's destruction is most likely not finished yet by the time you see this vlog. But I just want everyone to know that my prayers have been for you, with you, for your safety, and for the Lord's peace to surround you. Anyways, I had a few ideas of what we could do today, and I'm going to start getting that ready, and I will talk to you all in just a little while. I thought that I would share with you today a recipe for Montreal steak seasoning and Montreal chicken seasoning. And this is a copycat recipe. And the other day, I wanted to make a recipe that called for Montreal steak seasoning. And I don't know if you've looked at the, car, the cost of these type of seasonings, but for two and a half ounces, it was 250. For 14 ounces, it was $7.50. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? I mean, $7.50? So anyways, I went home, did a little bit of research, and it does not need to cost that much. And you probably have the seasonings right now in your own cupboard. And even some of these seasonings that it calls for can be substituted, like it calls for coriander seeds. Well, it can be substituted for just powdered coriander. The same with, um, with thyme. Maybe you don't have the thyme flakes, but you have the thyme powder. You can substitute these things. Maybe you don't have the dried onions, and you're going to, but you do have onion powder. It's, you can just substitute all these things. So most likely, no matter what, you will be able to make this seasoning mix. So I thought I'd go ahead and I would show you how to make Montreal steak seasoning. And down below, I will have the recipe for both the chicken and the steak. So anyways, let's get started. So these are the spices we are going to need. We are going to need four tablespoons of coarse salt, and I am using kosher salt. We are going to need um, a tablespoon of onion flakes, which I don't have, so I'm going to be substituting it for one teaspoon of onion powder. A half a tablespoon of crushed red pepper, some black pepper, I am going to be adding a teaspoon of that. It says a half a tablespoon of dried thyme leaves, but uh, yeah, out of that. So you can substitute powdered thyme. And so I will be using approximately a heaping quarter teaspoon because what you do is you divide your amount by 0 0.75. So it kind of like falls right into, um, almost like a third of a teaspoon, but we don't have that measure, so I'm just gonna heat my quarter teaspoon. And then we are going to use some, you can use coriander seed or you can use dried coriander. I'm gonna be using dried coriander. We are going to be using dill weed and it calls for a teaspoon of garlic flakes and I am gonna be using garlic powder so I will probably be using only a quarter of a teaspoon of the garlic powder. And just get a jar that you have a lid to, and we will start adding our ingredients. It's very simple. All you have to do is just add it right to your jar, and that way you will have it on hand, and you won't have to pay $7.50 for a container of it so this is my just want to make sure I do this right a teaspoon of onion powder that way I don't I'm also going to add a teaspoon of my pepper and we are going to add a half a teaspoon of the 
crushed red pepper. A half a teaspoon of the ground thyme. No, nope, no, nope, that's not what I said, did I? And that would be if it was regular thyme. This is ground thyme, so I have to use. Oh, see, I almost, almost messed up there, didn't I? A heaping quarter teaspoon. And then a half a tablespoon of rosemary. And a half a tablespoon of my coriander. Whoops, it's not going to fit in there, is it? I don't like jars that, that can't fit my, my measures into. And then a half a teaspoon of dill. And a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And that's all there is to it. We are just going to simply mix this up. You can just put a lid on this too and shake it up really well. But that was a lot cheaper. Whoops, spilled it all over the place. So I will just put a label on this as Montreal Steak Seasoning Mix. And this was a lot cheaper than spending that money at the store for it already made up. Anyways, I hope this has helped someone and I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. Look at how those leaves are starting to change already. At the tops of those trees up there. A lot of colors starting to show up. A lot of leaves has actually fallen off. Today's devotion is brought to us by Brenda at Maniac Gammy's Homestead. And our scripture verse for today is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, and also verses 17 and 18. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. In this chapter, Paul shares a comparison of the fading glory of the Old Covenant and the surpassing glory of the New Covenant that transforms the hearts of men. He has asked, who is up to the task of spreading the fragrant knowledge of Christ? Then he says that we are. For the New Covenant brings the life of Christ that enables us. The Spirit imbues us with his very life. The old regulations just point out sin and therefore sentences us to death. The Spirit is the very presence of the Lord in us. He gives us the freedom to obey his voice and not hard, cold rules. He can interpret the spirit of the word to us instead of being bound by strict legalistic interpretations. We are free from the chains of regulated behavior to obey the spirit. As we look to the Lord for direction and instruction, we reflect his glory. Instead of the cold, rigid rules 
we act in the life-giving spirit. In doing so, we look more and more like him. The attributes that are his are expressed through us so that people increasingly see the glory of the Lord in our life, the work of his spirit within us. The more we look to him and walk in that communion, the more people see the likeness of Christ in us. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And consider this. Does this describe you? Are you being changed with ever-increasing glory? If not, perhaps you are not looking consistently to his spirit, but to the letter. Even in Christianity today, there are those who look to hard, cold letter instead of the spirit of the Lord. Let his spirit interpret the letter in a given situation and point you to the scripture he would apply. Keep looking to him expectantly for direction and instruction. God bless, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.